So the new Congress was seated on Tuesday, and it was, um, well, I'll go ahead and say it was more entertaining than usual. Uh, for those of you who don't follow American politics, basically the Republicans were never able to get their clown car out of the fucking driveway because they couldn't agree who was going to drive it. Uh, it got so bad that by Wednesday, Donald Trump issued a statement warning Republicans that this was making them look embarrassingly stupid. Donald Trump thinks they're too embarrassingly inept to be associated with. But, but even though the GOP's brick fucking incompetence has left them unable to be sworn in so far, there is a new Congress. And look, I, I know I talked about this a bit back on episode 508 when the midterms first wrapped up, but it bears repeating often. The degree to which Christians are overrepresented in Congress is almost as egregious as the degree to which non-believers are underrepresented. See, every two years, Pew Research releases a report on the religious makeup of the new Congress. And here's how they open up that report this year. Quote, as it begins its 118th session, the U.S. Congress remains largely untouched by two trends that have long marked religious life in the United States, a decades-long decline in the share of Americans who identify as Christian and a corresponding increase in the percentage who say they have no religious affiliation, end quote. And, and look, apologies for throwing a bunch of numbers at you here, but according to Pew, 63% of Americans identify as Christian. The number in Congress is 88 40% of Americans identify as Protestant. The number in Congress is 57. 29% of Americans identify as religiously unaffiliated. The number in Congress is one. And, and that, that's not even percent. That It's one fucking person. You're, even if you count all the don't know and refused answers on our side, you still barely get to 4%. And of course, when it comes to atheists, the percentages are still infinitely bad. About 4% of Americans identify as atheists, and the number in Congress is zero. Still. Now, it's not all bad news. Uh, we do have a, a humanist officially now, which is nice. I mean, we already had him. He's Jared Hoffman. He's the co-founder of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. And he came out as non-theistic back in 2017. But the CQ roll call data actually lists him in his own category now as humanist, rather than sticking him in like the other category like they had until now. There are also three Unitarian Universalists, which is basically atheist light, and a couple of secular Jews, which is like his cultural atheist light, I guess. And of course, in the Senate, there's only one person who's officially religiously unaffiliated, and she fucking sucks. She's the fucking worst. I would trade her for a random Democratic Protestant in a fucking heartbeat. And even if atheists wanted to claim her, we couldn't. Because back in 2012, a spokesperson for Christian Cinema rejected us outright, saying, quote, Christian believes that the term non-theist, atheist, or non-believer are not befitting of her life's work or personal character, end quote. At the time, I was kind of pissed, but looking back on it now, she, she actually might have meant that as a compliment to us. And, but that's it. That's the state of non-believers in Congress. I mean, I guess the, the list of representatives opting for DK refused a, a slight uptick. There's 20 of them now, right? At least some of them are nuns that don't want to go on the record about it. But even if we counted all of them, along with Huffman and Cinema and Raskin and Susan Wilde and all three of the UUs, you get to a whopping 27 people. 27 out of 535. That's, that's about 5%. And that's the most generous possible interpretation, right, of how many non-believers we have to represent, again, the 29% of Americans in that category. And, of course, every huge disparity between the population and their elected representatives matters, right? But of all the groups that could be overrepresented, you'd be hard-pressed to think of a worse one than Christians. So, okay, like maybe rich people, I guess. But, but, but after that, it's got to be Christians, right? Because, honestly, of all the privileged groups in the country, none is more convinced other than possibly rich people, that they deserve the privilege that they have than Christians, right? None is more likely to look at people outside of their group as less American or less deserving of rights. And I'm not saying that to diminish the very real issues in this country of like, you know, institutionalized white supremacy and sexism, right? I'm saying that even when you use that incredibly unjust standard as your baseline, Christians exceed it. This matters, right? And it matters all the more when you consider the degree to which overt religiosity is woven into the very fabric of the congressional institution, right? They open sessions with prayers and invocations. They have a paid full-time chaplain. And in those instances where they're able to get their shit together long enough to elect a fucking speaker, most of them swear in on a fucking Bible. 
Although California's Robert Garcia is apparently going to swear in on a Superman comic, which is pretty fucking sweet. It's going to have a constitution over it, so it's not as cool as I just made it sound, but I still I, I had to mention it. Anyway, the point is that as long as the body itself is overwhelmingly Christian, they're not going to be overly inclined to reform these antiquated traditions. And keep in mind that it doesn't just matter on issues of church-state separation. Right? There are plenty of very religious representatives that can still stand on the correct side of the Christian privilege argument. Right, I say that as a donor to multiple Senate campaigns for Raphael Warnock. But religiosity also speaks to a person's epistemology. More and more, we live in a world that can't abide scientifically illiterate legislators. And part of scientific literacy is the ability to understand how knowledge works. Faith betrays a breakdown somewhere along the chain of reason. And that's worth worrying about all by its fucking self. Right now, some might push back against the characterization I just made by pointing out that, you know, like religiosity amongst politicians is often just performative, but that's not always the case. I seriously doubt that Pastor Raphael Warnock's religion is performative. And even when that is the case, you're not doing much to diffuse a problem when you're defending your elected representatives by pointing out that they might just be lying to you. Right. And look, yes. As you look at the Republicans piss all over their own pant legs in their efforts to make even the simplest of decisions at the opening of this Congress, it'd be easy to conclude that the underrepresentation of atheists isn't the foremost problem facing this body. But if you start looking at the religious homogeneity of the exact people fucking things up the most, as well as the overwhelmingly religious nature of their campaigns, their messaging, and the justifications they have for their positions, you'd start to wonder if maybe it is.